Hello, it's Dom Michelle, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be doing another round of deck and decks. This time, we're picking decks that feel like Sagittarius. So, I actually really struggled with this one until until it clicked, and then it was like no brainer, no brainer because. By my definition, which we'll get into here in a moment, I actually have quite a few decks that sit in what I feel like is Sagittarius energy. But when I started looking at this energy, I got into The Stars Within You, which is the primary book that I've been using um, to look at this sort of energy. There are lots of wonderful astrology and tarot books out there, but I was using one that was more focused on just the um, astrological sort of personalities because I do personify my decks. And this to me is just an exercise in personification. I'm giving them all a zodiac sign. Um, well, not all my decks, just a small collection. Anyway, I'm doing this whole little mini deck collection series of deck and decks along with the deck and walk for this year, which is being hosted by my friend Marlena Teresa. Links for all of her stuff will be in the description box below for you. So anyway, I read this little thing and there's this and there's a little blurb behind it about Sagittarius, which I'll go over here in a minute. But let me tell you, like I read this and I was like, mm, I don't think I get it. <laughs> like, I still don't think I get it. Um, as I've mentioned before, I'm like an astrology newbie. I really don't know much about astrology beyond the basics. I don't really work with astrology in my tarot practice. And so beyond like, you know, doing my own birth chart, knowing my own signs and things like that, um, I don't really have a vast wealth of knowledge to be pulling from. So this is me coming at this from this very beginner space. Um, so as always, like the decks may not align with how everyone else sees Sagittarius is just through my own sort of interpretation, I guess, um, through my experience with it. So anyway, I was like reading through this stuff and I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. So then I queued up Marlena's Sagittarius one video again, and I was rewatching the intro and then I was messaging her and I'm like, um, I'm phoning a friend because like I'm still it's not clicking for me and then there were a few keywords that she said in the video which I was watching at the same time I was talking to her because you know <laughs> that's how you do and there are a few keywords that she said in that video that just clicked for me so I actually like wrote them in the book because that I think above all else really is what made sense to me before we get into that, let's see what the book itself has to say. So we're looking at Sagittarius, which in this book is related to the philosopher. Um, the ruling planet is Jupiter, the planet of luck and expansion. The symbol is the centaur, which we see pictured here. And the main descriptors are inspiring and restless, which I kind of love. I feel like I have a little bit of that in me too. Um, the duality is masculine, element is fire, and quality is mutable, with the keyword being I perceive. And there's some attributes down here that also I think really lean into what it is that I ended up choosing for this particular selection of decks. So the attributes are adventurous, big-minded, honest, reckless, and frank, and the interests are traveling, horseback riding, camping, exploring, and archery. I don't know that I've really tied into those too much so far in this little decking collection that I've got going on, um, but this time I feel like I really did, and the drive is to seek truth. So what I pulled out of Marlena's video, which was like my aha moment, she said something about Sagittarius being the restless adventurer. And I was like, a uh, light bulb, it's D&D. D&D is Sagittarius energy. Okay, so then I got like super excited and it was ridiculous because then I started pulling out all kinds of decks because the second that connection was made for me, that's like a personal reference that now I can relate that to. So now it makes sense in my little brain, right? Um, and then there was also, she also talked about uh, it being related to the temperance and art card. So temperance in Rider Waite Smith, art in Thoth and how that relates to alchemy. And so I've got a little bit of that in here here as well but it was really that restless adventurer that really like that was the thing that made the connection for me so you'll see that most of the decks here are going to fall into that category with just a few that are going to hit that sort of alchemy temperance art energy so i always try to pick around eight decks which actually marlena pointed out was perfect for the first second of sagittarius because it is the eight of wands so very serendipitous there i have a five mass market decks and three indie and um we'll do the mass market decks first and then indie and as always you know links below so i'm actually going to share the 
these in the order that I pulled them out because this was my brain processing this idea of the restless adventurer with Sagittarius. So the very first deck that I pulled off my shelves is the Dungeons and Dragons Tarot. This is like one of those, you know, favorite decks in my collection. I've talked about it a lot. I have edged mine in this uh, beautiful yellow color, which is a Tombow. And this deck, Okay, so it's the Dungeons and Dragons Tarot, but for me, the art in this deck is actually more Dragon Age, and we're gonna get like all kinds of into the nerdy here. Um, and so it kind of sits in that hybrid space for me. Um, I do have another deck that I'm gonna show you in the indie that is full on D&D. &D. Um, I do love this whole D&D &D vibe. It does have a, you know, all of the, characters and the references are related to D&D, &D, but the art style is very Dragon Age. If you've uh, played that game, you'll know what I mean. So it's like this beautiful blend, but both of those things are very adventure driven. And there are a lot of restless adventure energy because it's all about going out and questing and you're never standing still. You're always doing the thing, right? You're always reaching for the next goal, the next quest, the next achievement, whatever it is. So I feel like gaming in a sense is kind of Sagittarius energy. And like, y'all, I got super excited when I made this connection because I was like, now I get a chance to pull out these types of decks and talk about them all over again, even though I have talked about every deck that I'm gonna show here in this video on my channel at one point or another. But um, anyway, I really love this deck. I feel like it does really embody that restless adventure energy. And it does also really tie into that to seek truth um, because I feel like a lot of what we get in D&D &D is trying to find the truth of the story, right? Trying to find the thing, what's going on? How am I gonna you know, interact with it? What am I gonna do now? What do I need to know, right? When you get into like legit D&D, &D, you know, you've got like dice rolls and, and checks and things like that. But on a tarot level, this deck, I think, really brings that all together beautifully. This is very much a deck, I think, um, for me personally, I guess. It, it's about seeking the truth within through the lens of story, through the lens of that um, explorative journey, through the lens of, you know, D&D, &D, of course, but really just the idea of fantasy in another world, in another place, and how that can relate back to what we have going on in the real world. Um, it's story at its heart, right? D&D &D is a shared storytelling adventure. And I just think this deck is like absolutely beautiful. So I am always game for showing it off because it's a gorgeous deck. It's a beautiful reader, and I really, really enjoy working with it. Um, it's definitely one of those that I pull out for all kinds of random readings just when I'm kind of in this mood. But like as far as being the reckless adventurer, yeah, that is that is like this deck, I think just embodies that beautifully. Let's leave it on the queen of intelligence because she is definitely a truth seeker. I'm trying to remember in what order I pulled these because I'm sharing my little brain process with you. So the next deck that I pulled out because it also sits in a fantasy sort of adventure world for me is the Modern Spellcasters Tarot, the deck that I always say is the most amazing deck and has the most unfortunate name. <laughs> I've also edged mine as well. Um, I think this was in a Sharpie bronze, like back in my very, very early deck edging days. This is a longtime favorite deck in my collection. It does swap the elemental associations between the swords and the wands, but it does make sense in the context of, of the deck and um, the elemental associations that it uses. I really don't have a problem with that. For the longest time, I just read it in my normal way, like uh, swords are air and wands are fire. And for the most part, that actually works pretty well in this deck. There's just a few, like this Ace of Swords, um, that is just encased in this fire that maybe steps a little bit outside of that elemental energy. But I still don't have a problem with it because I can understand like swords being forged in fire and I get that that um, association as well. But again, as far as being like the reckless adventurer, that is this deck. And I've, I've shown this deck in another video. I think it was something like like my gamer decks or something like that. Tarot decks that I relate to video games or um, things along those lines that have absolutely nothing to do with that. Uh, this deck for me for like forever now it has been my World of Warcraft deck. The 
illustrations in it, the energy, the world depicted. I mean, this, this night, this night on this giant eagle, like that is so World of Warcraft to me. It's, it's, it's fantastic. I love it. Um, but again, that is another adventure story, right? It's an adventure game. And um, the whole point is, is questing and questing to me is that truth seeking. And I just absolutely adore this deck. I think it's such a beautiful representation of that sort of reckless adventurer energy. It's a very solid reader too. And there was something in the book, I think it was in, I don't know if it was in one of my books or one of Marlena's books at this point, to be perfectly honest, but there was something about it being a straight shooter, or maybe she said that to me. And that is so what this deck is, because this deck is such a straight shooter when it comes to readings. Um, it is very Rider Waite Smith, with the exception of those elemental swaps. Um, but as you can see, like the illustrations definitely sit in that world. Again, total World of Warcraft vibes here. Um, but to me, this is this is a fantasy adventure deck, and it sits so perfectly with this idea of Sagittarius as the reckless adventurer that I was like, mm, this this is like maybe the quintessential Sagittarius deck for me. Although I have many many others, like that's World of Warcraft. Tell me it's not. I feel like these first three uh, mass market decks are like spot on for the adventurer side of things. This is my Wildwood Tarot, which is in this absolutely gorgeous Crystal Haven bag. I have several special decks in these beautiful bags, as well as my own Oracle deck. That was a fantastic collaboration. Sorry, a little shameless self-promotion there. This deck is amazing. I have two copies of this deck that I bought a second copy because I used this in my D&D &D campaign. So here's the box. And... Um, um, this deck for me, it, like it's a whole adventure in and of itself, right? Um, and I've mentioned this deck before because I have done the Year in the Wild Wood, which is kind of an adventure through this deck. And I'm so excited about the whole adventure energy because like that's totally the theme of my membership practice next year and like how this all is coming together with this energy. Um, I keep saying that like I'm not really seeing the energy in, in like my life and things like that. But actually when I stop and think about it, I totally see the Sagittarius energy in what I'm doing currently because I'm working on all the stuff for next year's adventure. And so like, I, yeah, it's there. It's very, very present. Also that eight of wands energy, very present for me right now. Uh, but anyway, this, this deck back to the wildwood, because I clearly I'm so excited. I can't stay on topic today because like, I'm just, I'm too excited to talk about adventure decks. Um, this deck is an adventure, right? It's got the year in the wild wood. That's a whole adventure with this deck. But again, I feel like this is like, you know, sits in that sort of fantasy, like druid world of like, like D and D, right? I'm, I'm going to keep relating it back to that because like, that's the root of my, um, fantasy life experience, right? Uh, but it is such a wonderful sort of truth seeker deck. The other thing that's really interesting about this deck, and I think um, works well for this energy, is it's not so much in that sharpshooter sort of thing, but like it is that truth seeker kind of a deck um, because it does have its own system. So while I have said many, many times that you, I personally think you can work with this deck without actually relying super heavy on the system. Um, you can work with the keywords that are on the card and still pull in your traditional tarot uh, knowledge. I did that for years with this deck and really didn't have a problem with it. Um, but then I was like, I'm curious. I just want to learn the system and it's, it's beautiful and I really enjoy it. And I kind of fluctuate between the two when I work with it now. Um, but because it does have a system of its own, like it is, is something that it's a little bit different. You have to you have to do the work with it, right? It's kind of like a quest in itself. You have to go out, you have to put the time in, you have to do the work. And in some ways it does kind of do some really different things. So we could kind of relate it a little bit not that that's super reckless, but it's different, right? It's just kind of going its own way, doing its own thing in a lot of places. And I think it's really cool. Um, I really love working with this deck. It's such a wonderful energy. I could have just as easily also pulled out the Druid Craft, I think. Um, now the Druid Craft definitely sits more in that Rider Waite Smith energy than the Wildwood does. But as far as like that sort of Druidic adventure type of energy, they both kind of sit in that same sort of vibe for me. So I just pulled out this one because of the fact that it does have its own system, which I think lends itself to, you know, that kind of next level adventure type of an energy. Okay, so the next deck that I pulled out is the Tarot Nuages. And this one and, and the next one that I'm going to show you are 
uh, quite new to my collection, so I've really just, um, well, I've really just scratched the surface with this one. Like I haven't even edged it yet. <laughs> um, here's the backs. And this deck I chose because it does feel a bit reckless and wild. And there was um, something either in Marlena's video, I think it was in Marlena's video, where she was talking about the sort of, you know, the centaur energy, the man and beast, and, you know, the kind of wild dualistic nature of that. And I feel like this deck, in addition to having that adventure energy of taking us into this whole another world, it also has a little bit of that um, sort of a wild, reckless, a little bit chaotic energy in some ways. Not chaotic in terms of like the art style, it's the way the deck reads. Um, and again, I haven't done a ton of work with it, so this is very surface level for me at this point with this deck. I also love that it has like it kind of has a bit of fey energy to it. And um, I think that's also a really great energy to tie into this sort of uh, adventure, this sort of recklessness, this sort of, um, you know, truth seeking. I think that's such a such a cool energy to pull in. Um, and again, it's one that I haven't worked with a ton. So this is very, very surface level, but it def definitely feels like, you know, it's taking me on an adventure. Um, and it does feel a little, a little reckless, a little dangerous. Um, it feels a little bit chaotic. And, and I mean that in a good way. Like sometimes I talk about like chaotic decks in terms of like really maximalist collage. This is a different kind of chaotic energy. This is like, again, I'm sorry, back to D&D, &D, but this is like D&D &D chaotic energy, right? It's like chaotic neutral. <laughs> is that, is that really, is that a way to describe a deck? I don't know. Um, but that's kind of how it feels to me. I, I really have enjoyed the little bit of work that I've done with it. Um, I'm really looking forward to diving into it even more next year. But again, it, it sits in that sort of adventure energy. And this one more leaning more into that kind of a little bit reckless, a little bit um, off kilter kind of an energy, which I think is really cool. I really enjoy it and I'm, I'm excited to work with it even more. So the last mass market deck that I have for you is fairly new to my collection. I know I've shown it before, but I've actually done quite a bit of work with this deck. I have edged it. I just not have made a bag for it yet, which definitely needs to happen. Here's the box. Here's the edging that I did. This is the, um, Steampunk Art Nouveau Tarot, forgot to say that before I even got into the deck. Uh, again, I've talked about this deck before. This deck feels like, it feels like a critical role deck to me, um, which again is another adventure. We're tying back into, you know, D&D &D critical roles, a D&D &D campaign played out by voice actors, which is amazing. If you have not checked it out and you like storytelling, check it out. You do not have to play D&D &D to enjoy watching other people play. Because again, like I've talked about, you know, in these other decks, it is is a like shared storytelling adventure. So it's, it's just amazing. Feels like because it sits in that world for me. Um, and again, this is probably a very B thing. Uh, I don't know if anybody else would see it, but because it sits in this sort of um, fantasy, steampunky inspired D&D &D world, it feels like an adventure. It feels like it has a lot of that sort of, you know, reckless adventure energy where we're gonna go out and we're gonna do the things and we're gonna, you know, complete all the quests and we're gonna save the world or whatever it is. But the really interesting thing with this one, it is also that really straight shooter deck. It is pretty much an RWS deck. So like for me, that does tend to get into straight shooter energy in just a general sense. Those rote meanings are just like in the back of my brain. And even though I don't read strictly Rider Waite Smith and I add my own layers and interpretations, that still means I throw a card down bam, I get it, right? I know what it's trying to tell me. Um, that's not always the case with every tarot deck, but it tends to be more that way with very heavily inspired Rider Waite Smith decks. Um, but this deck is a, an amazing reader and it's such a straight shooter for me. Like I lay my cards down and I know exactly what it's telling me. Um, but again, it feels like an adventure. It feels like stepping into this world, uh, feels like going on a quest. And I, I really, I love it. I love it. So the first indie deck that I have to share with you, 100% lives in the D&D world because it is the Tabletop Tarot, which is a very new indie deck. I raved about it in my wrap up. So sorry, we're seeing it again, but it is an amazing deck. It still has not left my table. Here's the beautiful backs. Um, the card's not so little slippy, but it actually shuffles really, really well. This, this is such an amazing deck. Um, again, 
fantasy, adventure. Um, this one is not so much in that sort of reckless adventure energy because I don't really get reckless energy out of this. It's actually really cozy. This to me is like the legends and lattes in a deck, right? It is the, the equivalent, the tarot equivalent of the legends and lattes book, which is this cozy fantasy story that takes place in a DD &D world. This is the tarot equivalent. It is beautiful, it is cozy, it is warm, but it exists in this gorgeous DD &D inspired fantasy world. Um, there's nods to some of the things that I've talked about already, like critical role and things like that, which is just amazing. And I really, really enjoy it. But also it is like, it's an adventure, it's a quest. It's just on the cozy side of things. Um, maybe a little less into the Eight of Wands and a little bit more into that sort of temperance energy, um, which is interesting because it's about kind of that mingling. Like cozy is not a word you would use or really that I would have ever used to describe D&D. &D. But there is this new trend in cozy fantasy, in cozy D&D, &D, and like I love it. I'm on that bandwagon. It's totally happening um, in my membership next year. So this deck I think is such a beautiful representation of that because it does sort of bring those two things together and blend it in this really beautiful way. So it's a little bit of the adventure and it's a little bit of the alchemy. Okay, so let's sort of start detouring a little bit. Um, this, I think, I feel like is a great blend. This is the uh, Tarot de Ozark. So this is an indie deck. This is the second edition with the updated backs. And this is a Marseille deck, but it is a Marseille deck that is done in this um, really, again, feels like this cozy fantasy vibe. So I guess we're not detouring that much um, other than I also feel like this deck kind of starts tying in a little bit more of that alchemy energy. So we have that gorgeous cozy fantasy in a Marseille. This is I think my favorite Marseille deck of all of, of all the Marseille decks that I have. I'm pretty sure this one's my favorite. I don't read with Marseille a ton, but I really, really enjoy working with this deck. It's gorgeous, it reads really well. Again, it's another straight shooter um, style of a deck, but it also has this like beautiful blending of um, styles and bringing in that sort of historical energy of the uh, Marseille with these like more, a, a little bit more modern art style, which I just, I love. I don't know, there's something about this deck, y'all. This deck, again, cozy fantasy. I love it. That is full on the vibe I am in right now. I mean, it's kind of the vibe I live in, like my own little fantasy world, but like cozy fantasy, like that's my sweet spot. Um, anyway, this would probably pair really beautifully with the tabletop tarot, and now I'm totally gonna have to try that. So the last deck I have to share with you again is another indie deck and it is in another beautiful Crystal Haven bag because I have tons of these now. This is the Quintessential Thoth Tarot by our own Lennon Smith who's here on YouTube. This is a gorgeous Thoth deck and this to me is alchemy. This is an alchemy deck. Um, it is fantastic. It, it works beautifully with my Sacred Threads Oracle, which is another reason why I think I'm really partial to it because I use them together a lot. But there is just something about the abstract nature of this deck that really sits in that alchemical feel for me. Um, it also does feel like it's a truth seeker and I feel like that's sort of energy really sits well with the Thoth. Um, not that RWS isn't a truth seeker, but I feel like RWS is a truth seeker on the mundane level and Thoth is a truth seeker on the spiritual or soul level. That is just the way that I've experienced those. I could have actually just as easily pulled out the OG Thoth. Um, I think that would sit in this energy really well um, too, but I love this one. I think it's just amazing. Um, she did such an amazing job with it. And I really love working with it in terms of that sort of alchemical energy. I think it's just gorgeous for that. It really like, it strips everything else away and gets to the heart of it. And I just think it's, it's fantastic. It's always fun trying to figure out like, how do I get all this stuff back in the frame? Not gonna happen. So this is what we're going with. Um, anyway, that is a look at the eight decks that I chose to represent Sagittarius energy. I always in parentheses put, I I think because I'm a beginner, I'm still learning and still working my way through this energy, but I was so excited by this one. Once I like made that adventure connection, I was like, I got, I got this. I'm good. 
This is how it sits in my brain. I would love to know what you think, decks you would pick for Sagittarius energy, what you think of the decks that I've chosen here, how that how that aligns for you. Definitely leave that for me in the comments below. I always look forward to reading those. Um, again, if you want to find out more about the deck and walk, check out Marlena Teresa's channel. It will be linked below along with links for everything that I've shown here in this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to sharing with you again soon.